Hey guys, I think we have a fun one. Yes, a fun one. Here's what we're gonna do. We're doing a part two to our welfare analysis think vertically video, okay? I wasn't planning on a part two, but I think a part two is gonna be a good thing. I think it's gonna be fun and it's gonna be challenging because we're gonna do one of the hardest welfare analyses that you could possibly do and we're gonna use our tool of thinking vertically. So let's get to it. Look at that graph. What do you see, okay? Well, you're probably looking at this split right here, and I'm gonna to get to that. You're right to look at it. Let me just first say, though, one thing I see is there's no externality from the production of the good. The MPC, marginal private cost of producing good, equals the marginal societal cost or marginal total cost. There's no externality from the production of the good. But where your eye might have went is that this MSB lies above the MPB. And again, we're thinking vertically. So I think it's really important to say, hey, that MSB does not lie to the right, it lies above, okay? And again, why do we say it lies above the MPV? Is we're saying, hey, if we were to produce that unit, this right here, that vertical distance would be the benefit to the consumer, the marginal private benefit. But then there's this additional benefit, right? That's going to third parties. That vertical distance would be the benefit to third parties, which is gonna be important in this video. And then we'd say this entire vertical from that dot straight down to that uh, marking right there, which is a unit of output. That is the societal benefit of that unit of output, which is the marginal part. The marginal is per unit, right? For that particular unit of output, that is the societal benefit. Again, benefit, private benefit to the consumer. This is our benefit to third parties. Entire vertical is that societal benefit. So we have a positive externality from production. Well, what do we do? We have a positive externality uh, from production. We generally subsidize it because we want to increase production. Why? Because the market left alone, supply and demand would give us an output level right here at Q market, right? But how much do we want to produce? Well, the MSC and MSB lines intersect right there, okay? So I'll put a red dot right there, bring that straight down. That is our quantity optimum, okay? To be allocatively efficient, we need to allocate enough resources to produce all the way to here. So the market would under provide this good, right? Under produce this good. We want to produce more. How do we get a market to produce more? We subsidize it, okay? We subsidize the market actors. We increase the market actors' benefits from the production and consumption of the good, or the producing and consuming the good, right? So let's do that. And because we're just trying to get some concepts here, let's do the perfect subsidy. The perfect subsidy would be a per unit subsidy that is equal to the positive externality. So that's the positive externality. We can measure that positive externality vertically, okay, at any place, but we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a subsidy wedge that comes in and lands right there, okay? And I wanna show you something very interesting, okay, is when I brought that subsidy wedge in, okay, this part of the subsidy wedge was MPC, this was MPB. That's right, when I bring the subsidy wedge in, I'm focused fully on MPC and MPB. That's MPB, that's MPC, it goes right in there. Why do I focus on the P curves? Because the subsidy is just going to the market participants, and hey, the market participants curves are MPC and MPB, right? So that's my subsidy wedge, that's my per unit subsidy. Then I bring this across, and this is my price producer, okay, price producer. Now one thing, that dot is on the supply or producer's curve, but the other thing is, price is a benefit to the supplier. What is the subsidy gonna do? It's gonna increase the price, because what was the price? Well, back to that old equilibrium, pre-subsidy, this was price market, which means this was the price producer originally and my price consumer originally. So that price producer is gonna go up, they're getting a benefit. This dot on my demand curve, so I think consumer, but also I just realized, hey, subsidies provide benefits to both market participants. How do you benefit the consumer? By lowering their price, because their price is a per unit cost, right? So there we go, we've got that graph, and there's one more thing I'm gonna need to do to do this analysis, all right? I am gonna have to divide just a little more portion of the graph. I just know that by doing this a lot, okay? So let's get to it, let's put letters in there, let's switch colors, let's go to red, maybe it'll stand out a little bit, so A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, and K. 
All right, so let's get to it. Let's do the welfare analysis. Now, when we do it, we're not gonna do kind of that policy one, no intervention, policy two, per unit subsidy, and then the delta column. We're gonna try to get right to the delta column right off the bat. Now, it means we're probably gonna kind of do what I said, but kind of fast, because I'm just gonna focus on the deltas, all right? So what do I mean by that? Well, prior to intervention, prior to the subsidy, what was the consumer surplus? Again, that can be difficult, but the price consumer was PM, so I've got my price, and I'm always focused on MPB for the consumer, always, always, as far as their benefits. 100% of the time, MPB as far as their benefits, okay? So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna say, hey, for any one of these units of output, the vertical distance to the price is the per unit cost to the consumer, all the way to there is the per unit benefit for any of these units. And so there it is, it would be B and D. Now, what happened with the per unit subsidy? It lowered the price, okay? So that price went down. So now what's gonna be the consumer surplus? Well, it's again gonna be the distance between the MPB and the price, right? The benefit and the cost is the surplus. And I'm gonna keep doing those verticals all the way to what I'm now gonna be producing. And how much am I gonna be producing? Well, when I bring in that subsidy wedge, output is going to increase, okay, to Q ops. So that's gonna be my Q sub, all right? When that PC goes down, we're gonna move along that demand curve to that dot. When that PP goes up, we're gonna move along that supply curve to that dot. So what's my new consumer surplus? It's that vertical, it's that vertical, it's that vertical, it's that vertical, that vertical, that vertical, all the way to that dot, because there's my MPB, there's my price consumer, and again, the difference between the benefit and the cost, which is the price, is the surplus. So it would be B, D, G, H, I. So the delta and consumer surplus is gonna be plus G plus H plus I. All right, so G, H, and I. Now the producer surplus. Pre-subsidy, this is my marginal private cost curve, marginal private cost. Price was right up here, okay? That was the per unit benefit to the supplier because price is a benefit to the supplier. So for any of these goods, I could just say, hey, that's the benefit of providing the good, that's the cost. I'm always focused on that MPC and I'm just needing to find the price, right? So the difference between the price and the MPC is the surplus. So I'm gonna stop right there because that was Q market pre-subsidy, so it'd be K and G. Now what's happened? That price producer has gone up, right? The price producer went up. So what would be their surplus now? Well, it'd be all of the verticals from their cost curve to the price, from their cost curve to the price. One thing, guys, you'll notice, I don't shift a curve for a per unit subsidy or a per unit tax. I use the subsidy wedge and the tax wedge. It makes everything cleaner. I can just focus on my original supply and demand curves the entire time. It just makes things simpler. So get back to this. These vertical, oops, a little bit high, to the price line, okay? From the cost curve again, to that new price, but I gotta go all the way to Q sub. So it's that vertical, it's that vertical, it's that vertical, it's that vertical, that vertical. I still got MPC all the way to that price. Those verticals all the way to that dot. So D, E, F, that's what they're gaining, okay? So plus D, plus E, plus F, all right? The government, this is an outlay. This is a negative thing for them. But again, thinking vertically, that vertical distance is the per unit subsidy. I got to do that vertical distance for every unit of output, that vertical distance all the way to Q sub, that vertical distance, that vertical distance, which makes this a rectangle for sure, okay? So it is here to there to there to there. It is minus D, E, F, minus J, G, H, I. So let's do that. It's going to take a little bit of doing here. So minus D, minus E, minus F minus G, minus H, minus I, my, oops, minus J, okay? So that's a lot to take in. This entire rectangle, and of course it's a rectangle, right? This is the per unit subsidy. It's gonna be that amount for every good that is bought and sold. QS, QD is right here where the Q sub is, okay? So that entire rectangle. Third parties, now, where is my positive externality. Well, this is probably the easiest place to find it, right? Is between these two curves. That's my positive externality. 
So I can just take this vertical for every unit of output. So vertical, 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 and stop before the subsidy, right? Before the subsidy, stop right where QM is. There was no output past QM. So right there, so it was A and E. Now with the subsidy, we're still getting all of these verticals, but we just keep getting these verticals all the way from the red to the black, from the social to the private, all the way to right here where Q op is. So now we've got A, E, C, F, J. So what was their delta? What was their delta? It was uh, C, F, and J, okay? So they got plus C, plus F, plus J. Woo! Now I wanna get the delta society. So how am I gonna do that? Well. I've got all my deltas here, so I'm gonna start crossing some things out, but I always like to pause right here, okay? If you are writing, let's say, an internal assessment for an IB class or any type of paper, these are very important in and of themselves, okay? So that's the change of consumer surplus, change of producer surplus. Those, these, these are groups that we wanna focus on. This is how they're being impacted, how they're being impacted, how the government, how third parties. So they're important. So I don't love just crossing things out, acting like this is the only thing that's important. This is important, but hey, this is really important too because that's what's saying overall, what's the impact? So let's get to crossing out. So I've got a negative D, positive D, right? Negative E, positive E, negative F, positive F. Negative G, positive G. Negative H, positive H. Negative I, positive I. Negative J, positive J. All right, take a look at this. I still have plus C, plus F. So that's right, society gained when we, made the, when we did this subsidy. So plus C, plus F. That's right, if we have a positive externality and then we subsidize, especially with that perfect subsidy, we're going to get a gain in social surplus of CF. Just before we wrap this up, just want to show you something, okay? So what would have been the deadweight loss if we didn't intervene and how would we have found it? Here's how we would have found that deadweight loss. We said, look, we're going to end up producing to here if we don't intervene, right? QM. So I like to draw a vertical line, right? Straight up, okay? What was my QOP? It was where my S curves intersected, okay? So I'm underproducing the good. What would be my deadweight loss? Well, this was MS. B, right? That's my MSB line. This right here, that is my MSC. That's my MSC. If we did not intervene, the deadweight loss would have been C and F. But because we did intervene, we got those back. <laughs> Hope that made sense to you. I think that if you watch part one and part two, you are going to be a master at welfare analysis. Remember, Think vertically when you're doing your welfare analysis. Have a good day. See you in the next video.